after watching this video, you will never play as white ever again, as if you want. Truth be told, majority of you guys who are watching are more comfortable playing with black pieces than white. This is simply because you feel more comfortable holding back and waiting for your opponent to throw the first punch so that you can react accordingly. So in this study, I'm going to show you some clever ways of always playing your favorite black opening repertoires even with white pieces. If you want to learn more, stay tuned, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Let's get started. Opening number one, the Budapest defense. There is a clever way to play the Budapest even with white pieces. You have never seen this before, but first of all, let me show you how the Budapest defense goes with black pieces. White starts with d4, then let's say you are a Budapest defense lover, and you go knight to f6, the top plate move is pawn to c4 as you can see, then you usually go pawn to e5, after de you go knight g4, white usually plays knight f3, holding on to the pawn and then you go knight c6, bishop f4, double defending, then you go bishop b4 check, and you can see the top plate move is knight bd2 blocking the check, then you go queen e7, to keep it simple for you guys, let's say your opponent is a beginner and they play pawn to a3, there's this little trap that every Budapest defense player needs to know where you ignore the attack on your bishop and rather take on e5 with your g knight because if a takes b4 you have this little smoothed checkmate that you can deliver against beginner opponents now this is also for you advanced players because i just want to make a point how can you play this with white pieces let's see ladies and gentlemen welcome to my crazy world where we play pawn to a4 on the first move this is called the wear opening guys though it is considered to be useless by many except magnus who plays it against gms this opening is an advanced prophylactic move in other words it's an improved waiting move i mean come on guys after all we still play this move in most openings somewhere in the middle game so this is not much of a stretch Black doesn't know exactly what to do. Is it pawn to e5? Is it pawn to d5? Is it pawn to e6? So in the case of the Budapest, Black has to play d5 on the first move. Then that's when you go knight to f3, stopping pawn to e5. In this position, Stockfish likes pawn to c5, after which you go pawn to e4 immediately. You can see the top plate move is d takes e4, after which you go knight g5. They defend their pawn with knight f6. Then you go on knight c3, again you can see bishop a5 is the top played move, and now this is when you go bishop b5 check. So this is check, knight c6 will just allow us to double up black spawns along the c file which is not good. So they normally play knight bd7, and this is when you go queen e2, again you can see the top played move is pawn to a6, where you can now safely take on e4 with your g knight. And once again, what do we see here? A takes b5, the top played move. And just like in the actual Budapest, this is how you deliver a smothered mat. Let me know if you like this in the comment section down below. Let's move on. Opening number two, the Italian game Gioco Piano. Let's say with black pieces, you like playing the Gioco Piano, which goes as follows, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and bishop c5. While there are quite a number of moves that white can play against the Gioco Piano in this position, such as c3, d3, or knight c3, the second most played move is castle shot, after which you can just go knight to f6, attacking the e4 pawn, and the top played move is d3, as you can see now. Remember what I shared with you guys in the video that has popped up in the card above about the benefits of not castling short early. This is where you can go pawn to d6, paving way for your light squared bishop, and then you can see the top played move is h3, where you can now play queen e7. Again, bishop g5 is the top played move. Let's say this is your repertoire as black. You already know this. Now you go pawn to h6. Remember, early castling is not part of our vocabulary. They normally play bishop h4. And now you start advancing the pawn right away. And again, you have so many ways to kill a rat in this position. Rook g8, pawn to h5, or even pawn to g4. But even better, it's knight h5 in my opinion. Wanting to capture the bishop on g3 since the pawn on f2 is pinned by our dark squared bishop. So they normally play bishop h2. Again, if you want, you can plant your knight on f4 and leave it there for good. But there's nothing better than going pawn to g4 in this position. Just messing up black's pawn structure on the king side since they have already castled short. And you have it, which is an added advantage to you. Let's say knight bd2. You can even castle long if you want, but rook g8 is the way to go. Noticing that white's queen is still in the line of our bishop, you will see them playing queen e1 in over the board games and pinning their knight. But this is when you can go bishop h3, because even if they play pawn to g3, you can simply sack your knight 
After bishop takes, you have rook takes g3 check. They can't take your rook. If king h2, you have rook g6, by the way. This doesn't work because you have queen d7 check. And after king h2, checkmate will be unavoidable after queen g4. White is losing. So, can we play this same repertoire with white pieces? How? Let's see. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the move is pawn to a4. And as you can see, the top plate move is pawn to e5. Now, this is when you can go pawn to e4. Let's say knight f6. Then you defend your e4 pawn. Bishop c5. You know, black is just putting his pieces on the most active squares. And so you should. Once again, you can see black is just messing up with lots of moves. But anyways, d6 will still come even after the castle shot. You can just keep on developing normally. Then you can see d6 is the top played move. If you haven't noticed up to now, we are playing the Gyoko piano as white. Just like what we were doing with black pieces. You can go pawn to d3 in this position. Now this allows the move bishop g4. You meet bishop g4 with h3, chasing that bishop away. And then you remember to play queen e2, which will also allow you to castle long in the long run. Remember, castling short is not part of our vocabulary, even with white pieces. So again, if they play pawn to h6, preventing your bishop g5 move, this is why you can start pawn storming on the king side right away. Because once again, black has already castled short. So this makes a lot of sense. Let's say bishop g6. Once again, you can play rook g1, pawn to h4, or even better g5. But hey, knight h4 is also a move just like in the previous opening. Wanting to take the free bishop because the f7 pawn is pinned to the king by our light squared bishop this time. So they normally play bishop h2. Now you go pawn to g5, opening black's king side completely, then knight bd7, you go rook g1 just like what we were doing, then black realizes that his knight is still pinned to the queen, this is not good, they go queen e8, but you have bishop h6, and whatever they can do, you just suck your knight once again, if bishop takes, you take back with your rook, that's check, black's f7 pawn is still pinned to the king, if king h7, you go rook g3, if king takes h6, I'm sure you can now remember this unavoidable checkmate sequence that we also had with black pieces. So what you did in the opening is you gave black a chance to shine while developing your pieces slowly and ensuring that you are still in your black opening prep. As you might have noticed, at this point, there is no game in the database that has reached this position because most people are not aware of this trick, you guys. And so you can be the first person to start populating the leeches database with these new lines. Allow me to appreciate and thank the following patrons who sponsor my channel and some of the extra works that I do on Patreon. Vivek, Mike, Alan, Bassam, Adrian, David, Dwayne, Sean, Eric, and the rest of the guys that you are seeing on the screen right now. You can see the list goes on and on. These are the guys who keep this channel running and active out of their love. They support our Casper Chess group financially. And in return, I give them extra materials that I don't post on YouTube to thank all of these guys in style. Thank you for supporting my channel once again. And yep, one of my support members is Samson Simpson. Thank you guys. If you want to become part of the Casper Chess community, you can simply follow me on Patreon and become a member. Let's move on. Opening number three, the perk defense. Now I know most of you guys, especially my beginner students, like playing the perk defense because you don't like showing your cards very early. You feel very safe responding to your opponent's threats and slowly coming up out of the blues to victory. So white begins with e4, you go pawn to d6, that's what you do. Then d4, knight f6, attacking the e4 pawn, they defend it with knight c3. Then you go g6, knight f3, bishop g7. Then without wasting much of your time with other sidelines, the top played move is bishop c4, as you can see, after which you just castle short. Again, you can see they also do the same. They castle short. You have an option to go pawn to c6. But what most of you guys didn't know that in this position, you can just sacrifice your knight on e4 this also paves way for your dark squared bishop making it even more powerful along this diagonal if knight takes e4 that's when you go pawn to d5 double attacking the knight and the bishop the top played move is bishop takes d5 that's when you take if knight c3 the beauty of chess is that you have a lot of options to take but only one is the best move so how do you find the best move you need to think of the most active squares for your pieces where they will have more coverage and control a number of important squares. E.g. Queen h5 is good, but you're not going to do much on that square. 
Same with queen a5. With queen d8, you are just undeveloping your queen and throwing the ball back to white. So the move to consider here is queen c4. If queen e2, by the way, you can just exchange queens and play bishop g4. You're going to mess up white pawn structure on the king side and you'll be good. So they're not going to play queen e2. The move that you're more likely to see them playing is bishop e3, the top played move as you can see. And now your focus should be on this d4 pawn because of your open diagonal. So you go rook d8, putting more pressure on the d4 pawn. It can only take one move, bishop g4 to get rid of the defender of the d4 pawn and you will win a free pawn so they play h3 now you go knight c6 so you see all you're doing is putting more pressure on the d4 pawn so that's how you keep the tension queen e2 once again you just exchange queens and you have so many things to do pawn to e6 is one of them but you have bishop a5 attacking this pawn they'll play pawn to c3 now you go pawn to a5 i mean this would just be anyone's game let the best player win this game i want you to pause the video if you can and remember this position keep it in your head because you're going to see this exact position now with white pieces let's go now you are playing as white and the only thing you are specialized in is the perk defense here is how you can play it so you go pawn to a4 Again, e5 is the top played move. Now you go pawn to d3, controlling the e4 square. And you can see d5 is by far the top played move in this position, after which you go knight to f3, attacking the e5 pawn. The top played move is knight c6, black defense. Now you go pawn to g3. Again, you can see knight to f6 is the top played move, after which you can fear your bishop. And by this time, black is confused. They don't know what to do. Is it bishop d6, bishop c5, bishop g4, e4. Let's say bishop c5. And now you can see the idea, ladies and gentlemen. Knight takes e5 immediately is good. But securing your king in the perk defense is better before launching an attack. Because they do the same. You can see that with your own eyeballs. And this is when you employ the same technique that you learned in the perk defense of sacrificing your knight on e5 because you know that after knight takes e5 by black you have d4 double attacking the knight and the bishop again you can see bishop takes d4 is the top played move now you have queen takes d4 what else knight c6 is the top played move and now you have an option either to go queen h4 or even queen d1 but that will be passive this is where i said look for squares where your pieces are going to be more active again queen c5 once again bishop e6 is the top played move in this position after which you start targeting this weak d5 square again it can only take one move bishop g5 to get rid of the defender of the d5 pawn so black may play something like h6 here now you go knight c3 if queen e7 once again what do you do you just exchange queens and on the next move you develop your bishop on f4 They'll play pawn to c3. Remember the position that I asked you to keep in your mind. This is the same thing that you're seeing even with white pieces. Do you still believe that the way of opening is useless? Let me know in the comment section because I've noticed that you guys have been quiet for quite some time, which is not encouraging. The views are increasing and even the likes, but you're not commenting. It's like you're just downloading the videos or probably just watching. That's not good. By the way, back to our typical perk defense setup where you play pawn to g3 and then black plays knight f6. You go bishop g2. We saw that bishop c5 allows us to take on e5 right away and play pawn to d4. But what if black plays bishop d6? You can just go ahead and castle short. You can see they'll do the same. They'll castle short. Now at this point, you want to get rid of your queen's bishop as quickly as you can. Bishop g5. If pawn to h6, you trade off your queen's bishop just like what we do in the typical perk defense with black pieces. Now you go knight c3, they'll play bishop e6 and now this is where you go pawn to e4. You can see d4 is the top played move. I like knight e2 to be honest and in the near future I'll play something like knight h4 and play this little pawn break which we play in the actual perk defense. You guys this is a very wonderful opening. Opening number four, the Bushka's Gambit. So let's say you love the tricks in the Bushka's Gambit, which I presented in the video that has popped up in the card above. Beginning with e4, then you go e5. After knight to f3, you just go bishop c5, sacrificing your pawn on e5 for free. Well, the idea is that after knight takes, you have knight c6, overing this trade as well. So that you wait for white to play bishop c4, which is the top played move. After which you surprise them like this, bishop takes f2, check, which is a sacrifice. 
making their king lose their right to castle. And then you go queen d4 check. And after king e1, you take their light squad bishop, leaving their king on the center, which is good for your eyeballs. Let's see how you can do this with white pieces as well. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you go pawn to a4. The top played move is e5, you know. Now you go pawn to e4. If they play knight f6, attacking your pawn on e4, now this is when you can go bishop c4, allowing them to take on e4, you can see that's the top played move, after which you go knight c3. Again, you can see knight takes c3 is the top played move, but you just take back. Again, you can see bishop c5 is the top played move, after which you can do the same trick, just like what you did in the actual Bushka's gambit with black pieces. Now with white, making black lose his right to castle and then win his dark squared bishop on move 8 like this. Once again you are playing the Bushka's gambit with white pieces, except that this is an improved position with your well advanced pawn on a4. Opening number 5, the Stafford gambit. Now I know most of you guys are familiar with the Stafford gambit because Eric has done a great job of reshaping the Stafford Gambit. For example, one memorable trick in the Stafford Gambit to always remember is where white plays bishop g5, trying to pin your knight to the queen, but hey, in this position you have knight takes e4, sacrificing your queen right on move 7, so that you can checkmate white in two like this. Can we achieve this same checkmate with white? Let's see. So once again, you can start with a4, then e5 by black, you go e4, knight f6, if knight takes e4, you go knight c3, allowing black to take your second piece. And then on the next move, you want to take the free pawn on e5. That's why you see the top played move is pawn to d6, after which you now go bishop c4, just like what we do in the Stafford Gambit. And now you can see bishop g4 in this position is the second most played move, which leads to the same mating sequence that we saw in the Stafford Gambit with black pieces, after knight takes e5, sacrificing our queen, because once again, if bishop takes d1, we have bishop takes f7 check and bishop g5 checkmate. Again, if d takes e5, we have bishop takes f7. If king takes, black's queen is dead. If they don't take your bishop, and let's say they go king e7, well, you still have bishop g5 check. And on the next move, once again, black screen would die. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed watching this video. And do subscribe to my channel if you are new. Leave your comments in the comment section down below to keep this channel active. Don't just watch. Anyways, until next time, bye bye.